Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell, and I'm happy to be sharing with you today some biographical information and to talk about the Symphony No. 4 of Franz Schubert, who lived from 1797 to 1828. Now, a lot of the Romantic era composers died young. Many died in their 40s. Mendelssohn died at 38, unexpectedly, of what was thought to be a family genetic problem that caused a stroke. Schubert died even younger, at just 31. And the amount of his musical output is simply staggering. It's enough to make most musicians say, well, what exactly have I done with my time? <laughs> like Mendelssohn, the Austrian Schubert revered the work of Beethoven, and he was known for saying of his own compositions after Beethoven, who would dare to do anything? Yet it was not too long after his death that it was Schubert that was very roundly considered to have been the one who took over from Beethoven as the next great orchestral composer. It is said that he saw no recognition of his work during his lifetime, certainly never saw musical success of his orchestral works. He's considered to have been the first musician to have attempted to live on his own without the support of a patron. Now, arguably, his musician friends were his patrons because they often housed and fed him. I've spoken before about the German concept of the folk and how this influenced Romantic era society in Germany and the Romantic era musical scene. Not just that um, in Germany all things are supposed to be subordinate to being German and to being like other people, but also that the German music should rise in importance. It should be for everyone, and it should be for the edification of everyone. So with Schubert, his first recognition and success, he has literally scores of literal scores of his study and notations of folk music and folk songs. They're often quite simple pieces and really wonderful for beginner pianists. This study grew into his own settings of leader songs, which became the real groundwork of his legacy. Most often these were settings of the poetry of contemporary German poets of his day. So while the Italians had the opera and aria, Germans have the art songs of Schubert, including two huge song cycles, Die Schöne Müllerin, The Beautiful Miller's Daughter, and Die Winterreise, The Winter's Journey. Now, Schubert's songs and both of these song cycles are unrelentingly dark. But we could just very easily say, well, he wasn't very happy, and it's reflected in his music. Well, these song cycles obviously have moments of sparkling beauty and very memorable and accessible melody. The entire cycles can be very hard to sit through today. Spoiler, they both end in death, and the majority of the songs are like the depressive thought process said to music. And I say this as somebody who has struggles with depression. A quote from Schubert, when I wished to sing of love, it turned to sorrow. And when I wished to sing of sorrow, it turned to love. Now, frankly, some of the appeal of these song cycles is their artistic rarity. I think they both have more than 22 songs each, or about that. They are a tour de force for the singer and the pianist. And so they have a real professional clout for that reason. They're a labor of love to do the entire cycle. They also have a very strong connecting storyline throughout the songs. So I think one way we can access them a little more is we remember they did not have media. They did not have television, radio, film. So in a way, these are like the art films of their day. So, you know, like a more serious French film that covers uh, more serious topics 
or like the films of Bergman that are slower in pace, darker in tone. So you can get a better sense of their appeal if you think of them in that way. Musically, there's really nothing like them. And they have that particular facet of genius. I will also say that uh, available through multiple sources are a couple films that have been made of these song cycles. And um, there is one in particular that features a contralto that uh, you should look for because it is the closest to just making a film and it is truly artistic in the original setting. It's almost as if she is a nun uh, reading the story of these songs and then we have we flash into the story being told in a filmic way. For purists that would not work because this was work was not a work written for a mezzo or contralto and she is. Um, but it's, I think it stands up very well. But I'm talking about the symphony. This is all to lead into his tragic symphony. This symphony was never performed until two decades after Schubert's death. And it, as is not always the case in the Romantic era, this symphony actually was titled the Tragic Symphony by Schubert himself. After completing it, not immediately upon completion, and no one has really discovered why. One thought is that it is his only completed symphony that is composed in a minor key. His unfinished symphony is the other symphony in a minor key. Um, one supposition could be that when he, once he began working on a second symphony in a minor key, it might have given him a little clarity on the distinction that he felt between the previous minor symphony and this one, and that's when he went back and named that one the tragic. But that's, we will never know exactly why he went back and decided to give it that specific title. This symphony contains musical references to Haydn's The Creation and to Beethoven's String Quartet No. 4 and also to Beethoven's Sonata Pathétique. Now we have to remember today pathetic is such a loaded word. We have to remember that Beethoven's Sonata Pathétique was not meant to be pathetic as much as it was meant to be passionate or impassioned. So that's also the way we should think about this. The Romantic era composers had a definite idea of sadness was a part of being a passionate and openly expressive person. I found it interesting as I was researching this to see some commentary online about some of Schubert's work. There are ongoing discussions about whether music should only bring us joy. I saw a comment written by a musician who wrote, if Schubert were happy and never wrote a note, wouldn't that be better than us using his sadness for our entertainment? Are we that dead in our souls? I'd rather give up music than to have to live in this continual despair. My immediate thought is, isn't that like saying we only want warm, sunny days? We only want happy music? We only want sunshine? When Mendelssohn gave us light, bright, happy music, he was called facile. So is the only definition of music that it has a beat you can dance to? Certainly, we know what gets clicks and views in the media and on the news. We know that the darker impulses are what attract our attention and get the viewer eyes. So we have to consider it may not be emotional voyeurism, but something better, something more noble that draws us to feel with Schubert. In his letters, Schubert wrote, Man bears misfortune without complaint, yet finds it thereby all the more painful. Why then did God endow us with such a capacity for sympathy? I think it's that sympathy, that idea that he could empathize with our moments of loss and dejection, that perhaps 
has given us a friend in Schubert. As George Eliot wrote in Middlemarch, No, dear, to understand you would have to feel with me, else you would never know. And in his music, Schubert shares his feelings and allows us to understand that he feels with us. I want to leave you uh, before you click on the link to listen to the Tragic Symphony. I want to leave you with this comment, which I think really gets to the heart of this interconnectivity between our emotions and Schubert's emotions. This music got me through some very tough times. With this music, I never felt that I was alone, no matter how much I was suffering. Thank you.